I can do it by myself. I just have to tell you, you look so hot today. I can't take my eyes off of you. He touches her shoulder. You know you're driving me crazy, right? This top looks so good on you. Did you wear it just for me? Stop it! You're bothering me! I don't like the way you say those things. Don't look at me. Go away! Carl leaves. Later, at the kitchen table, Janice finishes her meal. She dabs her mouth with a napkin and stands up. Carl comes up behind her and grabs her shoulders. He rubs her arms and turns her around. Flailing, Janice knocks over a drinking glass. Now, in an office, Janice works at a desk. Slouching, she cradles her head in her hands. A colleague, a young man using a wheelchair, passes by. Hey, Janice. How's it going? She barely looks up. Later, the wall clock reads almost 12.15. Her colleague returns carrying a plate of pizza. Hey, Janice. What are you doing? Are you going out back for lunch? I'm not hungry. What is your favorite? Pepperoni pizza? No, thanks. OK. More for me. Janice's colleague leaves. She slouches at her desk. Now, in an office, a woman takes off her ID card and puts it in her handbag. Janice appears at the door. Marco, can I talk to you? Of course you can, Janice. Come in. I'm going to close the door so we have some privacy. Okay. Is that okay? Uh -huh. They both sit down. Tell me what's going on. Carl keeps touching me. I'm scared. He keeps touching me. I tell him to stop, but he won't stop. Where is he touching you? He sometimes hurts me in my private areas. And he says it's a secret. And he says not to anyone. Have you reported this to anyone? The police? Anyone at home? They won't believe me. They all like Carl. He's everybody's favorite. I believe you. Janice, what Carl is doing is abuse. It's against the law, and it's not okay. And you did the right thing by telling me. When was the last time he hurt you? Last night. He said some weird things to me. And I was cleaning up after dinner, and he grabbed me. Then what happened? He touched me down here. Okay, right now our job is to make sure you're safe and make sure Carl can't hurt you. We need to call the police and adult protective services and they can help make sure that Carl never hurts you again. Then we need to go to the hospital where there are specially trained nurses called SANE nurses. And you'll need to be very honest with them, tell them exactly what happened so that they can give you the medical attention you need. Are you sure? He said nobody would believe me. I believe you. If you want, I can make the call for you. But if you want to tell them yourself exactly what's been going on, I'll stay here with you and I'll support you while you make the call. You'll stay with me? Absolutely. Let's call right now. Okay. Margot dials a number on her desk telephone. She hands the receiver to Janice. A counselor answers the call. Good afternoon, Adult Protective Services 24-hour hotline. This call is being recorded. How can I help you? Carl touched me again. He won't stop hurting me. Well, you've called the right place. I need to ask you some questions about what happened so that I could provide you with the necessary protective services. Take as much time as you need, and if you don't know the answer, it's okay. We'll just move on to the next question. Are you ready to begin? Okay. What is your name? The counselor fills out a form. Thank you, Janice. What is your address? Fade to black. Kristen McCosh. That was upsetting to watch. Did you notice any warning signs that indicated Janice was a victim of abuse? Janice didn't want to eat. She didn't want to talk to people or go to lunch with her friends. She seemed very sad when she was sitting at her desk. All of these things are changes in Janice's typical behavior. Janice was in a tough situation. She knew what Carl was doing to her was wrong, 
but he told her that nobody would believe her if she said anything. He told her to keep it a secret. We should never keep abuse a secret. One of the ways to stop abuse is to tell someone, to report it. Janice did the right thing. She told Margot, her supervisor at work, what Carl was doing to her. Janice went to Margot because she is a trusted person in Janice's life. Think about the trusted people in your life. Who are they? Are they family? Someone at work? A good friend? What about your doctor? We should all know who the trusted people are in our lives. The people we can talk to if we need help or need to report abuse. Margot was able to help Janice in a number of ways. She helped her call Adult Protective Services so Janice could report the abuse and get the help she needs, such as medical treatment, a safe living environment, and counseling services. Adult Protective Services can help people who have been abused in a lot of ways. They respond by making sure the person is safe and by getting them the help they need to recover. Margot also talked to Janice about calling the police because Carl committed a crime. In addition to talking about recognizing abuse and reporting abuse, it is also important to talk about how to respond to abuse. So, let's talk about responding to sexual abuse. When someone is sexually abused, it is important to get medical help as soon as possible. Margot talked to Janice about going to the hospital and being examined by a sexual assault nurse examiner, otherwise known as a sane nurse. They are nurses who have been specially trained to help people who are victims of sexual abuse. If you, or someone you know, is sexually abused, it is very important to protect evidence. Do not take a shower or bath after the abuse. Do not wash the clothes you were wearing when it happened. And do not wash your sheets or bedding if it happened in your bedroom. In addition to getting medical help and protecting evidence, it is very important to help a person who has been sexually abused to deal with emotional trauma. It is also very important to get counseling. When Janice called to report the abuse to Adult Protective Services, the operator began to ask her questions. If you call to report abuse, the person you talk to will have a lot of questions. They need to find out what happened so they can get the right help for you or the person who has been abused. Some of the questions they will probably ask are the name, address, and phone numbers of the people involved. What happened? How was the person hurt? It's okay if you don't know the answer to some of the questions. It's okay to say, I don't know. The next common type of abuse we are going to talk about is neglect. Neglect happens when a caregiver does not provide care or support and a person is harmed as a result. For instance, if someone does not give you your medication and you have a seizure as a result, that is neglect. If you need help showering and the person who helps you walks out of the room and you fall and injure yourself, that is neglect. In this video, we are going to meet Mike. He is a young man with a physical disability who uses an electric wheelchair. Mike has a job in his town and gets transportation assistance. Bob, who is a driver for the transportation company, drives Mike and several other people to their jobs each day. A title, Neglect, Mike's Story. In an office building lobby, the clock reads 842. Bob checks the day's van schedule. Mary has to be to work at 9. Bob glances at Mike, who waits nearby. <sighs> I'll do my best to get you to work on time, Mary. If only Paul would... Paul arrives. Come on, everybody. Let's go. If we hurry, we can still make it. Everyone waiting for a ride goes outside. In a parking lot, Mary and another passenger climb into the van and sit down. Bob secures Mike's wheelchair onto the lift and flips a switch. The lift rises. In the van, Bob struggles to lock down Mike's wheelchair. Bob, are you ready yet? I don't want to be late. Mary, OK. Just a second. I'm having a problem here. Bear with me, will you? I don't want to get into trouble. Bob! Bob abandons his attempt to lock down the wheelchair. Mike, we got to get moving. This stupid latch is screwed up again. We have to get Mary to work. It's just down the road. Look, I'll fix it as soon as we get there. Let's just get moving, okay? I don't think it's a good idea. It will be fine. We'll be fine. It's not that far, and I'll fix it as soon as we get there. Yeah, but... It's all right. Take it easy. We're still going to get there. Bob climbs into the driver's seat. Nearby, a young man listens to music on an iPod. He unlocks a car and gets in. 
The van pulls out of its parking space and starts to drive away. Staring at his iPod with a grin, the young man starts his car and backs up. The two vehicles nearly collide. Mike's wheelchair lurches. Is everyone okay, Mike? The young man drives away. I can't believe it. he's just driving away. My neck. Mike? Bob dials 911. We've had an accident. I need an ambulance. Mike is still in the van. I, I think he's hurt. Now, an EMT fastens a medical brace around Mike's neck. A uniformed state trooper stands nearby with Bob. OK, Bob, so can you tell me what happened here? We were in a hurry. Mary was going to be late for work. I was having trouble getting Mike's wheelchair secured in the van. It's been a problem before. I thought we'd be fine. We were going to drop Mary off at work, and then I was going to fix it. I never thought anything like this was going to happen. We never even made it out of the parking lot. OK, Bob, it sounds like you were under a lot of pressure, but what you did was against the law and a form of abuse. Abuse? I would never abuse Mike or anyone else. By law, all passengers are supposed to be properly seat belted in. I told you it was an accident. I was going to fix it as soon as we got married to work. I never wanted anyone to get hurt. I hear what you're saying, Bob, and I know that you didn't mean to hurt Mike on purpose or intentionally break the law. But as the driver, it's your responsibility to make sure that all of your passengers are safely seat belted in. You knew the wheelchair wasn't properly secured. And when you drove off without correcting it, you put Mike at risk. As a police officer, I am a mandated reporter, and I have to report this incident to Adult Protective Services. It is neglect, and it is a form of abuse. I'm sorry. Bob hangs his head. The state trooper checks with the EMT. He's alert, but to be safe, I'm going to go get a gurney and then bring him to the hospital. OK, thank you. The state trooper crouches next to Mike. Mike, I'm really sorry that this happened to you. And I know that you said that Bob didn't mean to hurt you on purpose, but it was his responsibility as the driver to make sure that he did everything to make sure that you were safe. When he drove off, and he knew that the wheelchair was not secure, he put you at risk. And that's neglect, and it is a form of abuse. So if someone is supposed to be helping you and they're not doing their job or they're doing something that could hurt you, then you have the right to report that. So I'm going to give you this card. This is the number to Adult Protective Services. You call that number anytime, and someone will answer the phone, and they can help you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mike takes the card. Fade to black. Kristen McCosh. What did you notice that was different here from the other stories we've seen so far? Bob, the van driver, and the abuser did not seem like a bad guy. Everyone, including Mike, liked Bob. And Bob thought he was doing the right thing, getting everyone to work on time. The problem was Bob did not do something he was supposed to do. He didn't lock Mike's wheelchair, and as a result, Mike got hurt. Bob knew that he was supposed to make sure that Mike was safe in the van by strapping in his wheelchair. That was his responsibility. Mike even questioned Bob and said he didn't think it was a good idea to leave his wheelchair unbuckled. But Bob didn't listen. When Bob drove the van without Mike being strapped in, he was not doing his job. He was not keeping Mike safe, and he was neglecting Mike. Neglect is abuse. Caregivers have things they are supposed to do to keep you safe. It is different for each person. Maybe they are responsible for helping you with your medication, helping you shower or shave, helping you to put on sunscreen, making meals, or turning you in bed. If a caregiver does not do something that is their job and you are injured as a result, they have neglected you. Some common warning signs of neglect are dehydration, not enough water, Malnutrition, not enough food. Lack of supervision. Skin rashes or bed sores. Injuries due to accidents, just like Mike. Lack of clothing or not properly dressed for weather conditions. Lack of needed adaptive equipment, including a wheelchair, walker, or hearing aid. In our video, a police officer gave Mike the number to Adult Protective Services so he could call to report abuse himself. Remember, you have the power to report abuse 
and put an end to it.